was the Avalanche who had to face a unreal challenge. Sort of. Let's start in the morning as we look at the Avalanche and their game against Vancouver. Jared Bednar, early in the morning before Vancouver about Ryan Johansson. Yeah, yeah, I have. I thought I think he's been more competitive here over the last handful of games for me. You know, like he, I think he's been playing with a good conscience, but more that you have to push yourself physically, um, competitively in um, areas in order to, you know, succeed. And I think he's done that more consistently over the last handful of games. Now, there were some people rolling their eyes at that. Ryan Johansson had only scored two goals in the past couple of months. He hadn't scored in 20 games. So there's Ryan Johansson scoring the two most important goals of the game last night in the 3-1 to one win over the first place, best team in the NHL. Wow, 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 Vancouver Canucks. Ryan Johansson. Could, nobody could believe it. The whole crowd erupted because every it's an unbelievably knowledgeable hockey crowd. Unbelievably knowledgeable. I mean, the Az fans absolutely know every little detail about what's going on with their team. So when Ryan Johansson scores a goal, never mind two, I mean, there's a sense of, yeah, man, we're behind you. You're part of our team. Even though we may talk about trading you and grumble your name. Ryan Johansson got the goals. And, you know, Bednar looked like he was some sort of bizarre soothsayer. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I thought he played hard again tonight. You know, like I just see, like there's just a little bit more competitive spirit in his game here recently. You know, the team's been digging in. He's a veteran player. Um, it looks different for everybody, you know, that competitive spirit, but he's been working hard and doing what he can, and he gets rewarded for some of that work here tonight. He was good, you know, nice to see him get rewarded. The first one, in two different ways, really. You know, nice play by Zach on the second one. They they cheated to take the wall away, finds D2, which happened to be Joe, and a good shot and screen gets a lucky deflection on their D trying to block it. The first one getting gritty, that whole line, and then going to the net hard and finding the rebound. So off the end boards, is, it was good. Good to see. Is that something you've spoken to him about or is something he just Well, we've been talking to our whole team about that, you know, and it's been so. And I haven't spoke with him individually on that, like recently, but I mean, we're reiterating it every day and what we need to do. It's one of our keys to, well, really defending. It's what the game requires in order to win at, at the end of the day. is that you, can't, you can't cheat your work ethic. You can't take shortcuts. He's got to be hard and competitive or it's just not going to be good enough. And it was interesting talking to Ryan Johansson in the locker room afterwards. So what Bednar is saying is that ah, I didn't, I didn't bring him aside, but everybody kind of knows. And he's part of what I'm saying. I'm challenging guys. I mean, there's certain guys you're looking at more than other guys. There's just no doubt about it, but, but he isn't the only one. He just stands out the most. That's all. So talking to Ryan Johansson after the game, you could tell it was more of a relief. Then some sort of, you know, jubilant all week or something. Uh, I guess nothing, just sticking with it and trying to elevate uh, as a team and individually and just trying to do more because that's what it takes this time of year. And uh, It's nice to get rewarded and, and contribute. How did it feel to get the goals? Great. Feels great. Always feels great to contribute and, and uh, impact games. Was that second goal just a sign of when things are yeah. the they, they, they just work? Yeah, it was, it was a lucky bounce, and obviously it's it's from the work in front of the net, creating that scrum, and it bounces off his hip and goes in. So it's a, it's a funny game sometimes. You go stretches and can't score, and then and stuff like that happens. But kind of with the start of it, you just you just got to keep sticking with it and, and uh, find ways to impact games. Yeah, his first goal was, you know, right place, right time, pucks on a stick, backhand, flips it in, kind of a garbage goal, like, you know, all right. And the second goal was from the point, which for 
Ryan Johansson is weird because, you know, basically he makes his living playing in front of the net, big guy. And, and uh, yeah, he got lucky. There was a deflection off their defenseman that went in. Okay. So, yeah, there's luck involved sometimes by putting the puck to the net. So whether you want to give him credit or not, I suppose that's up to you. Do you, you say, hey, way to go? Or do you say, listen, that was a lucky night. That's all there was. There wasn't much skill to it. It's right place, right time, and a, and a good bounce. And, and like I said, you could tell from Ryan Johansson's expression, and you just saw it, that he understands how those goals went in and what happened. He's not taking some sort of gargantuan victory lap. And when um, Devon Taves earlier in the year said there's, you know, 16 guys who are playing well or 14 guys playing well and six guys who are, you know, not including guys that think they're doing better than they really are. Listen, in my opinion, in my opinion, it it feels hard to believe Ryan Johansson wasn't one of those guys. And perhaps that has created some tension amongst him and his relatively new teammates. And with the trade deadline coming up March 8th, I mean, that is right around the corner. There is a pressure need. We've talked about it here for one of two things. Either somebody play as they expected Ryan Johansson to play or Ryan Johansson just plays how they expect him to play. And obviously, being challenged by Bednar has been significant. Focus on or... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. you got to uh, you know, try and find ways to do as much as you can. And I uh, definitely wasn't happy with my game there for, for a minute. And, and um, so, you know, I've really been focusing and trying to do trying to do more and it, it feels good to, to contribute uh, with a win here tonight and, and hopefully keep it rolling. Okay, man, you see what I'm saying? It's much more just relief than, you know, that he's thrilled about things. Listen, the win is huge, okay? Vancouver is the top team in the NHL with an amazing road record. Now they have lost three in a row and they follow up losing 10 to seven after blowing a big lead in Minnesota um, with a, a loss in Colorado. So perhaps there are those that are questioning, is it a false summit? Is it, is it a, a, is there some sort of Michigas with the Vancouver Canucks? Foolishness, silliness. Is it, is it a bunch of hype and there's not much to it? Is this a typical, you know, president's trophy winning sort of team that's just going to collapse in the playoffs. Let them have those doubts in uh, Vancouver, which I understand is a beautiful city. For the Avalanche, it was proof that, hey, man, this is who we are. So let's forget about that road trip, and let's think about, as Bednar said, the last three out of four games, which were, you know, really positive. You did have a, you know, a disappointing game in Tampa, but, you did beat Washington. You beat a scrappy uh, Coyote team, and now you beat the best team in the league, theoretically. Listen, it helped playing Vancouver on the second night of a back-to-back. I'm not going to lie about that, and Bednar admitted that that was a good thing. But still, you did trail in this game one nothing as JT Miller got the first goal for Vancouver. And in that particular instance, it was like, oh, my God, is this really going to happen tonight, where the Avs were flying. I'll tell you this, a team like Vancouver that allows a lot of open ice and a lot of speed up and down, that is not a team I'm afraid of for the Avs. That's going to present a lot of possibilities. Meanwhile, the Avs are 2-for-28 on their on the power play, and that's not great. But, there's a big but, though. The vast majority of things here were fantastic for the Avs. The style of play, getting contributions from Ryan Johansson, And the only last piece of the puzzle was Nathan McKinnon, who going into the game had a 26-point home scoring streak. And you do wonder if streaks like that matter or don't matter. And and the the last thing you want to do is put some sort of personal record ahead of the team. But again, when I talk about the smartness of the ball arena crowd for the Avs, a a huge chunk of that 
is just knowing big things and little things. And for the ball arena crowd, McKinnon's home scoring streak, point streak. <laughs> ah, excuse me. What a big buildup to that sneeze. <laughs> ah, they come in twos. I, I told you this was live. McKinnon's point scoring streak was a big deal. And Jared Bednar confirmed it. Well, I was wanting him to get it. I mean, he had a couple good looks. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, he, I think he, he he stays with it right to the very end. You know what I mean? Like, I think he was a little frustrated because they had some good chances. And then we had the power play at the end where I thought we created some nice chances. Um or at least a couple good looks to the net. I don't know how many of them got through to the net and whatnot, but he, 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 get a, he knows he's going to be on the ice at the end of the game, right? So, I mean, if we can hold on to a win or build or build a lead and hold on to a lead, then he's going to get an opportunity uh, with the net empty. So I was really happy to see him get it, and as long as he can keep that going, I, I think it's a positive thing for our team. Okay, so now we know. Now we know this is a positive thing for the team while still being a personal accomplishment. It's as if a running back was getting 2,000 yards. The offensive line is celebrating. You know, there's a little pressure on a Terry Lekkinen because the goal came with 27.6 seconds left. That's it. Woo! And the crowd was pumped that it happened, rightfully so. 27.6 seconds left. And McKinnon extends his point scoring streak at home to 27 games. Huh?